Hi there, this is Mahar Haddad here again. In uh, this lecture, I have to speak about uh, two things, about uh, the standards, and I'm going to speak also about uh, the different bands that we have. So let's go directly and start with the explanation. As you may know that uh, in everything uh, which is uh, networking, there are some standards that needs to be done uh, before they can or we can use the technology that we want to use. So for example, for the wireless, there is a standard which is 802.11. So 802.11 is the standard for the wireless. Now, how the standard happen? Normally, the standard is made by the uh, uh, organization which is called IEEE. And IEEE, they make working group responsible to create some uh, standards for some technologies. And uh, they create a working group uh, to create and maintain the Wi-Fi standards. So the standards are being done by the IEEE. Now, a draft amendment goes through several drafts before it is ratified, approved uh, to become a standard. So meaning that once those groups, they just uh, meet each other, they make a lot of drafts. Uh, and uh, before uh, the, uh, the standard becomes uh, valid, then it uh, we will have a lot of drafts and then afterward it will be ratified and approved and then it become a standard. And that's what is the 802.11, which is the standard of the wireless or the Wi-Fi. An approved standard uh, may add more features. For example, 802.11n was an amendment added to the standard. So once we have the standard there, then we can or they can add more features based on the new technologies that may come. So meaning that this standard is not fixed, it is just can be uh, adjusted and added uh, more features on it. So for example, when we had this uh, new technology, which is 802.11n, which is a new technology on the wireless, then in this case, the, uh, the uh, there were an amendment for that and then it will it was added to the standard. Now, the latest revision of the standard as for now, it is the 802.11-2020, which also include two new technologies, which are 802.11-AX and 802.11-BE. So just uh, put in mind that the standard is uh, made by the IEEE. There were working groups to work together to make the standard. The standard doesn't directly go and become a standard, so it has to pass through some drafts, and then after that, it will be approved to become a standard. And this standard is not fixed. It can be uh, added more features on it, like I have showed you when we spoke about the 802.11n. Now, some other standards that we may see in the, the networking field. So we have uh, the 802.3 which is the standard of the wired network, meaning if when you, for example, you put a switch and on the switch you connect computers and maybe you put a server here and then you put another computer wired. So everything is uh, by cable. So this is, uh, works on 802.3 and this is the standard for the Ethernet. Now, once you buy an access point, which is giving for you the wireless, so this is making wireless. The access point by itself most of the time comes with uh, some Ethernet port. So meaning that on this uh, um, device we are using two different standards. The Wi-Fi standard which is 802.11 and we are using also the Ethernet standard which is 802.3. So meaning in this case uh, anyone who is connected to the Internet via the wireless can have Internet and if someone plug a cable and connect a computer for example here to this Ethernet port, also he has Internet. Now, another standard, so there are a lot of standards that if you want to speak about them, but I just said chosen two uh, of them so you have an idea. The other one is called 802.1x, which is normally, it's called port-based uh, network access control, and also sometimes they refer to it as port-based authentication. So this standard is used by the 802.11, uh, to secure uh, the control uh, when using the WPA, WPA2, and WPA3 enterprise security. So what is this standard? It's not something important for you to really know, but just uh, maybe I can give you an idea about it. So normally we have uh, this, uh, uh, the access point that we have here, and then we have people connected a phone or a laptop or whatever to it. And then uh, this uh, is connected somehow to a radio server. All right, so this is a radio server, which is doing normally the authentication. So what happens is that normally this is called a supplicant. This is supplicant. This is the authenticator. 
and this is the authentication server. So what happens is that when this want to get into the wireless, then it sends something to the um, to the uh, access point. Then the access point will send it to the radius, and then the radius will say yes or not if it's allowed to be connected. So uh, this access point over here will be like uh, in the middle, like just waiting for the feedback from the radius, and the radius will say yes, she can get connected then it will allow him to be connected. So this is uh, a, uh, something that uh, some um, like uh, big companies, they deploy that uh, in their network. And the final thing that I want to speak about it is the frequency bands that we can see on 802.11. So we know 802.11 is the standard of the wireless. So uh, uh, on the Wi-Fi, we uh, use uh, five uh, different uh, frequency bands, which are the sub one gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, 6 and 60. So most of the time we see that uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz are most of the time on uh, uh, all uh, devices that we have, like the phone, the tablet, the, the laptop, uh, any uh, wireless device uh, working on the wireless, then uh, we see that uh, they support the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz for now, because things may change later, because we will see in a moment why we will see also that 6 gigahertz, 6 gigahertz will be also added in the future on the new de newer devices. Now, uh, on the 2.4 gigahertz, uh, we use these, uh, the bands which are 802.11b, g, n, and ax. All of those, they work on the 2.4 gigahertz and they are back compatible to each other. All right. So uh, that's something you have to put in mind. On the 5 gigahertz, we can use 802.11a, uh, .n, .ac, .ax, and they are back compatible to each other. So meaning that in case uh, you want, uh, for example, uh, you buy an, an access point which works on 2.4 gigahertz and not 5 gigahertz, so just you or you deploy only the 2.4 gigahertz, and uh, you have a phone uh, which only has 5 gigahertz, then in this case, they will not be able to communicate to each other. All right, so that's something you have to put in mind that when you are referring to which band you have to use, you have to, they should be on the same uh, range of frequency. While if you use uh, um, a phone with the 2.4 gigahertz, then it's fine. But also you have to see which band it supports. Say that this one support, um, for example, N and AX, so the newer uh, technology, and uh, your phone is an old phone, it supports the, the B. All right. So then in this case, um, uh, normally it will work, uh, but it will work because it's back compatible. It will work on B. So meaning that this access point has to reduce its speed to be able to support the uh, 802.11B, which is the standard that uh, uh, an old one, which is used on your phone. Now, um, the uh, 802.11AX, uh, devices uh, operate on 6 GHz. That's why I said to you that we may start seeing the newer mobile devices uh, and uh, newer network devices which support the 6 GHz because AX is a new band and um, a new standard that is being added to the wireless and we see uh, that uh, uh, this uh, has a lot of much bigger uh, bandwidth that you can use uh, when you use the AX. So that's why we will see from now on more and already there are a lot of devices which is uh, having the AX. Now, uh, while we are speaking about the uh, frequencies, let's see what range of frequencies are being used on the Wi-Fi. So on the 2.4 gigahertz, we have from 2400 megahertz means 2.4 gigahertz until 2500 megahertz means 2.5 gigahertz. But the actual range is 2.401 gigahertz until 2.400 95 gigahertz. So this is uh, where the frequencies is being used on the 2.4. On the 5 gigahertz, we have from 5000 megahertz to 5835 megahertz, but the actual range is from 5000 or 5.170 gigahertz. So this is here megahertz and this is here gigahertz. So that's why it's 5 pond. And over here is 5, 25.835 gigahertz. The 6 gigahertz range is from 5,925 megahertz to 7,125 megahertz. So those are the ranges that we use on the Wi-Fi 
2.4, 5, and 6 gigahertz. Now we have uh, we have said over here about the sub 1 uh, gigahertz. So this is normally is used for the 802.1 AH or we call it Wi-Fi Hey Low. So uh, using low power consumption and long range coverage and mainly used for Internet of Things. So we use this uh, frequency uh, when uh, we have something like uh, um, Internet of Things, uh, like uh, for example your uh, um, for the heater, maybe, uh, maybe for some, uh, something which is uh, working on the, the, the Internet of Things. So in this case, uh, you have a much lower power consumption. And then uh, we will see that uh, because it's low frequency, then it can have a very long range because the wavelengths are very long. And uh, that's where we can uh, see that uh, we use the uh, sub 1 gigahertz. Another time we see it, is on the 802.1 or .11 AF devices. And uh, normally this is uh, uh, the frequency for the TV channels, which is uh, not used by the TV, so the Wi-Fi can use it. Now, the last thing that I want to speak about uh, in this lecture is that we also see the 60 gigahertz band, so as we have mentioned here, and the 60 gigahertz, gigahertz bands, uh, it has a very high uh, frequency because it's on 60 gigahertz. So meaning it will give me a very big bandwidth. So this is what we call directional multi gigabit as a physical layer. So meaning it's a very high throughput. So it gives me very high throughput, especially if we want to do something like point to point link. So um, like outdoor point to point link, we can really send a lot of gigabit per second speed uh, from one uh, location to another. But the only thing is that we are not allowed to have uh, a big uh, distance between the two points because we are using very high frequency then the distance in order for the signal to be received by the receiver this distance should be very short like maybe one or two kilometers something like that as maximum but yeah even if you are in a country where you have a very good weather and uh, it's not raining a, a lot so why not to use it because you can send really a lot of capacity and uh, of course again the location between the sender and the receiver should be not too far so then you can profit from the 60 gigahertz and already there are a lot of uh, companies that are using the 60 gigahertz for outdoor uh, you can uh, see that uh, whenever you buy an antenna or you search for an antenna just you can search for 60 gigahertz and you will find plenty uh, of them one of them that i have uh, I tried it once so it was uh, from Microtech 60 gigahertz and it works perfectly so this is all what i wanted to show you in this lecture so uh, we now know about the standard and we also spoke about the frequencies so uh, uh, this is uh, very important uh, to keep in mind if you want to do the exam so i hope that this lecture was informative for you and i'll see you in the upcoming lecture